The next presentation is an online presentation by uh, Thivos Perakis uh, from Stockholm University of Physics. And his presentation will be on XPCS at Max4. So Thivos, if you're online, please go ahead. So it's my pleasure to introduce this initiative of expression of interest for X-ray photon correlation spectroscopy at Max4. We heard a lot this morning, uh, different uh, XPCS talks, and uh, the main theme I wanted to discuss here is this nanoscale fluctuation that came in in a lot of different contexts. So I think this is the central scientific theme. I want to start with that, which is basically you can imagine that you have a kind of fluctuation that is happening. This could, this could be, for example, a spin a fluctuation or could be a concentration or a density fluctuation. So that's common along many materials, for example, that are electric materials. People have seen these things in skirmions or spin density waves, as well as more soft matter applications, like water, crowded protein solutions, and complex fluids. And with most, uh, when you look at dynamics with most kind of uh, like approaches so far, you can only average over time and get an average information about the time scale of these fluctuations, but not probe the fluctuations in equilibrium per se. So we heard a lot in about X-ray photon correlations spectroscopy this morning and how it is possible to look at these fluctuations by using the coherence of max four. So this is the, one of the techniques that utilizes the unique coherent properties at max four uh, in order basically to, to look at uh, the fluctuations in intensity that reflect in momentum space these fluctuations that are happening in real space. And by analyzing basically these fluctuations as a function of time, you can get the information about the, their time scale like we heard in this morning, as well as by going to higher order correlations uh, get information about uh, their magnitude, not just what's the characteristic time, but go beyond the time average and get the information about the magnitude fluctuations. So that's kind of the, the theme of this expression of interest here. And we heard also some very exciting results at COSAX, uh, where it was possible to demonstrate that uh, the coherent being properties at COSAX by looking at the, the coherent imaging as well as XPCS. So that was uh, for me very exciting news, uh, reading this written article at the Gen Journal of Radiation, uh, as well as I would like also to show here some recent results at Nanomax, which we did recently in our group. And that was uh, initiated by basically Paul Bell, who was able to coordinate having a, detect a fast detector on site and then uh, Alexander Bjorling and Clemens Weniger were kind enough to perform the in-house experiments. This was done remotely, and currently we're analyzing these results. So it was exciting because we could use nanobeams to look at the, the dynamics, and by using nanobeams, uh, look at the microsec uh, at the same time also using microsecond resolution. So that was a, an interesting, a very cool demonstration that we can reach this microsecond uh, time scales we heard previously. And Sharon uh, Bergovic is the PhD student who's analyzing these results. She had a poster also, is presently there at the user meeting. And we are also now uh, trying to use basically the two time correlating functions to get information about this heterogeneity. So this is basically de demonstrating that you can use nanobeam potentially to enhance your sensitivity to these fluctuations. I also want to mention here that I have been also very actively interacting with Franz Hennis from Max4, who's coordinating a VR infrastructure grant for purchasing such a detector, microsecond resolution detector for a species at Max4. So all of these things are connected to this expression of interest. Uh, in addition, there's a lot of interest in doing soft X-ray species. I've been uh, part of these discussions, uh, this consortium for trying to look at spin XPCS, looking at skirmian dynamics, spin ice fluctuations, and here are listed a lot of the people that have been uh, leading this initiative, uh, which is also has a, a strong detector component, a technological component, going towards nanoseconds now. I like what was mentioned previously, like what would be your dream in 20 years? So for me, that would be my dream, basically, if I can reach 
nanosecond or even femtosecond uh, dynamic measuring at, at uh, synchrotrons. So that would be a super exciting. And lots, a few of the keywords here is the LGADs and the time fix three, time fix four, which are event driven uh, detectors that you can reach down to 10 nanoseconds or so. So this is now existing technology. Uh, so, and I, I also, another aspect I want to mention here is also related to uh, a Rankin Angstrom proposal cluster that was uh, granted for doing uh, XPCS at Max 4, as well as at Petra 3 and other places. And this, this is an initiative that is driven by Christian Wood and Peter Schutterberger, Lund, and as well, I am part of the co PIs, and here are the other co PIs, associated scientists for doing XPCS uh, protein dynamics. So it, it's, it's very, I think it, we have been doing very well in this initiative recently, the, just this year, there's been a lot of new publications which shows the momentum and the interest of using these sources. So this was just to show a little bit the impact that can have such an initiative. And that's now a flashback from two years ago uh, where we had a parallel session Unfortunately, I couldn't make it there this time due to family reasons, but uh, uh, it was uh, the, that's where it started, basically, this expression of interest letter two years ago. And uh, that's basically here on the left. You can find it online. And now we're planning to extend this uh, for discussing it about the dedicated XPCS green line, upgrade the current stations and other infrastructure capabilities. And with this, uh, I'd like to thank you. I uh, hope I didn't run over too much over my time, and I'm happy to discuss any questions. And please send me an email if you want to be involved in this. Here's my contact. I have questions from the audience. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Pedro, sorry. Well, I'm just uh, uh, trying you're, to you're you're close in the dark. You have mentioned results from several other already existing beam lines. So I'm trying to understand the, the dedicated XPCS beam line that you're proposing. Will this beam line be capable of doing things that the existing beam lines cannot do? Or is it uh, additional capability in terms of uh, being able to, to receive more users with that technique? Yeah, exactly. I think that's a very good question. Thank you. And the experiments that I showed are things that just came out this year that demonstrate that this technique is possible at Max 4. And it, it, it's not the, usually the beam lines that do these things are also doing a lot of other things. Uh, now, let me also say that one of the reasons I couldn't come today is because I'm part of the ESRF panel allocation for beam for XPCS. And this is like oversubscribed by three times. So there's like a huge user community that want to use this. So Max 4 is one of the places that has the highest coherence at the moment. And it is possible basically to ad attract all this user community. And by having a dedicated instrument, I think one can implement a lot of different capabilities there and like small angles, wide angles, and so on, and push even more further the existing uh, capability. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thanks a lot.